you are really going to enjoy this particular section. Lots of great real world information as well as plenty of info to help you nail the CCNA the first time around. And also a brand new lab that I've never presented in a course before. Just wrote it last night actually. I was explaining something and I thought we should do a lab on that. We should dig into it. So that's coming up really at the first of this particular section of the course. But uh, I have to lead off with a couple of weasel words. Generally speaking, generally speaking, we want all the switches in our network to know about all the VLANs in the network, even if a switch doesn't have a port placed in some of those VLANs. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a moment. But the reason I put those weasel words there, generally speaking, uh, you know, we don't really think of VLANs as a tool to increase security, but in a way they really are. Because with VLANs, what we can do, we can create something called a private VLAN, which unfortunately is way out of the scope of the CCNA. It's not something we can dig into here, but I want you to know they exist. And you could put port, you could put hosts in there, you could put servers in there, and just hide them away from the rest of your network. So the reason I mention that here is that there are exceptions to the rule, but generally speaking, we want all the switches in our network to know about all the VLANs in the network, because if that doesn't happen, we could run into an unexpected connectivity issue. And I knew I'd have to move this over a little bit because there is a lot going on here. Our first three switch lab, you can see we've got a host 10111 connected to switch one. And I'm using a Cisco router for our host here, by the way. You'll notice that when we send the pings. But here it's representing a host. And I've also got one running at 10113 connected to switch three. And we've got a couple of trunks involved here as well. So we've got a trunk up and running between switches one and two and two and three. I did verify those before we got started, but we can do a show interface trunk here in a minute on switch two anyway. So my first question to you is, with all things being equal, and I promise I have not configured anything else, I got the trunks up and running and these two ports up and running, just check those and that's it, I haven't configured anything else. Should these hosts be able to ping and what VLAN are they both in? Assuming all switch defaults. I kind of answered one of those questions, but a hint never hurt. So let's go ahead and take a look. First off, we'll verify our trunks, and we're going to hop over to switch two and do that. And there they are. Our two trunks are up and running, and everything's beautiful. Status trunking is what we're always looking for here. So all is well. Now if I go over to switch one, there are two different ways that I could see what VLAN port zero slash one is in. And the first one, Show VLAN brief, we've run this plenty of times and you see all these ports piled up over here because by default all of our switch ports are in VLAN 1. And since I did mention we're at the defaults, then that host must be in VLAN 1 and so must be the, the one over on router 3, excuse me, switch 3, will be in VLAN 1 as well. I want to remind you of another command though, and it's show interface switch port. You get a lot of handy information with this command, and sometimes too much, but when you do start configuring private VLANs in your CCNP studies, here's all kinds of information about those private VLANs. But what we're most interested in right now is what access mode the port is in, and you'll notice access mode VLAN 1, and it even tells you, hey, it's the default. The exam won't tell you, but the switch will. So everything's looking good there. Let's go over to switch 3, and... Let's run a show VLAN brief. Looks good. We'll run show interface switch port, and I'm going to use a pipe here to filter it. I'm going to show you how this works real quick. If you're going to run a command, because you can't run show interface switch port fast 0 slash 3. Let me show you. See? There's no option for that. These output modifiers can be a little tricky to use, but they do come in handy. You just put that pipe right there, and then you've got these all these different options. But it really does help because if you're looking at show interface switch port, port three wouldn't be that bad. You hit the enter key a couple times, you hit the spacebar a couple times, and you get there. But if you're looking at port 21, you really don't have to scroll through all of that stuff. So I'm going to say begin, and I know it begins with FA03, and there's my information for port three. And we're looking good there. And then again, access mode VLAN 1 is the default. So with these two ports in VLAN 1, let's go over to host 1, host 1, and send a ping. 
Might lose the first one, goes right through, and we'll send another one. And the pings go right through. So let's go back over to host three. Send a ping over to host one, goes through with no problem at all. So right now, these two devices can ping with absolutely no problem at all. So let's go ahead, you know, because things happen, changes happen, and we need to get, we get the word that we need to put these hosts into VLAN 100. So we will go out to our switches and take care of that. We'll make them access ports while we're there. And there's the magic command. We get a little message there, access VLAN does not exist, which means the switch looked at it and said, hey, I don't see VLAN 100 in my database. You're trying to put a port in a VLAN that doesn't exist. The switch has your back and will create that VLAN for you. So over here on switch three, And we get the same message because the VLAN did not exist on switch three. So both hosts are in the same VLAN. We saw they were able to ping a moment ago and there was absolutely no problem. So let's just verify that we've got our connectivity. And that doesn't look good at all. Hmm. Well, we'll just go ahead and leave that one because I have a pretty good feeling if that one suddenly isn't working. Let's go over to host three. And all of a sudden my pings are dying. Why? What in the world just happened? And you may have seen that phrase a moment ago when I went to the next screen, but what in the world happened there? Well, what you've got to do in this kind of situation, whether it's VLANs or otherwise, if, you ch if something is working, and you change something and it doesn't work, your change probably created the problem. And a lot of you are sitting there saying, well, duh. <laughs> but you'd be surprised. There, there, are just, there are a few network admins in the world, just a few. You know, human beings are human beings. And what happens is people tend to, you know, well, it's not my fault. I didn't do it. Well, if something was working and you changed something and now it doesn't work, the change caused the problem. Well, the thing is we changed two things, actually we changed each port from its default of dynamic desirable where the port is actively attempting to trunk. We made it an access port where the port belongs to what? One port and one port only. We covered that earlier. And also we changed the VLAN membership of each port. So we changed two things there. And I would go with the second one because really changing the port from dynamic desirable to access, that really shouldn't have caused any problems. So we need to examine the VLAN membership of that port and see exactly what's going on. And we're going to start our troubleshooting at the beginning of the very next video.